For this video, we are continuing Jinsu Week, and this time around, we're going to be pairing orange with purple. So it's going to be a late game oriented list because I'm running Jinsu. Not to say that Jinsu can't go in more mid rangey lists, but I I just prefer to kind of play it in control, or at least in more late game oriented lists where you can do a good job of protecting Jinsu if possible. Also, I think that orange just really shines as a stall color. I know that sometimes people use it as a swarm, but I think that it's really good at just buying you time because it's got a lot of uh, value generation, resource generation, things like that. And uh, we're just going to quickly go through the list. Pretty standard fare, eager recruits for early game. Ghoul is, in my opinion, one of, if not like the best orange card. I think it belongs in absolutely every orange list you play. A recruiter for draw, a freak for the body and the divination, parry for draw. Uh, Raziel is just a solid warded creature with good utility. Uh, Scion is actually just a great utility uh, creature as well. Seals for pesky recurring things. The one temptation is a pseudo finisher or sometimes it's just a solid two for one. Uh, and then Armageddon Angel is a board sweeper slash finisher. Solomon's Gale, if left unchecked, can just take over a game. Uh, on the purple side, it's again going to be kind of late gamey, kind of controly. So three racer and shadow. These are kind of like uh, ignitions in this list. You're just going to use them as removal most of the time. Ghost in the system, uh, two peach of life to help you kind of stabilize, gain that life. One red cliffs as a tech choice. I think it's fine at times if you want to include something like red cliffs as a one of because with the burn system, if you draw your one tech choice and it's the wrong matchup, you can send it away and then you're only punished if you draw it a second time. Uh, three sword saints, just because I think that gaining the, uh, the sword from this is kind of a big deal. Life tap can certainly certainly help out. Uh, Misfortune, Cloud Pillar Peak. Both of these are, uh, again, trying to help you with that long-term value Misfortune for a lot of favorable trades, especially with your, uh, you know, your smaller things like Eager Recruit. It makes them become far more valuable. Uh, Cloud Pillar Peak lets you draw cards. It's my favorite of the, uh, the series, right? Like there's a cycle of enchantments where you draw an extra card per turn. I think Cloud Pillar Peak is the best of the bunch. Uh, Feng Shui is for enchantments. Nine-Tailed Vixen, is it included because it's resilient with the five health. It has deadly, so that's relevant. But believe it or not, the uh, return a bottom spirit minion in your boneyard to your hand, it, I don't think you need like a critical mass of spirits to make this be worth your time. Even something as simple as keep a uh, recurring racer in shadow to deal two damage to things is very relevant. But also at the top end, we'll just jump down a wee bit early. Uh, at the top end, I'm running two Baku Boogeyman. And uh, I like this card in a list like this because if you're running stuff like uh, Recruits, for example, being able to discard the 1-1s one to Boogeyman means like nothing to you, but can potentially blow out opponents. And then when you combine it with something like Vixen, if you keep getting these back, it's super annoying. Uh, also, uh, still on the top end here, Spirit Away. Jinsuk Dollmaster because that's the entire point of uh, this series and that's going to be it. So uh, like I always do with these, we're going to go jump on the ladder. We're going to play two games, win or lose. I, I, I've been terrible with my predictions lately, but I feel like this is this is not going to go well. I mean, we're, we're always hoping for wins. I just, I, I'll admit this is an untested list, right? I haven't tested this in, a, in the wild and it feels a little... Um, incohesive at the moment like a lot of the stuff I was including was literally like just good stuff right like what is what is a good card that I should include so there's not necessarily um, a goal and whenever that happens I, I feel pretty bad about my matchups okay so uh, early Orpheum is always scary so in this case we will Actually, I think get rid of the Afrit. All right, so we're up against what's traditionally red, purple aggro. Um, yeah, we're gonna go with that. Feng Shui is uh, pretty nice here. Uh, let's give them the Wyvern just because I don't wanna have to deal with the second Orpheum uh, any sooner. And if we can get rid of this first one with the Feng Shui, I think that goes a long way. Uh, 
Oh wow, the Red Cliffs is also incredibly solid here. Um, I would like to... I think... Do something like this for now. And the next turn we'll probably burn this. I mean, unless we draw something better to burn, but we'll probably burn this. This was a, a really great draw for them and not so great for us. We need to get ourselves in a position now where we can go with the Feng Shui. Though that that's actually a pretty solid pickup for us as well. Not having to deal with these at all anymore feels like a pretty big deal. I just also, I liked the idea in theory of going with the Vixen, but yeah, I think, I think I just am fine with taking the hit there. Get, getting rid of their ability to draw a bunch of cards on bodies feels okay. Oak, okay. All right, so we're gonna do this. And then what? I mean, we, we need to get rid of the oak. I think that much is pretty apparent. It's just that uh, I was hoping to get at least a two for one out of this and uh, the oak with the four attack trades in, but nothing else that we really have also trades with the oak at the moment, so that feels pretty bad. Uh, this was clever. The armor obviously protecting from uh, the red cliffs. Yeah, I think that this is probably correct. I'm just not a big fan of it. Again, I really wanted to get some additional value, I think, out of uh, the Vixen, but we don't have anything else in our hand that trades with this. Okay, so they are a list that runs Gigantomachia. How interesting. Well, now we're in a pickle. I actually think that I'm stuck burning Perry here. It's Perry or Ghoul. I guess Ghoul is acceptable. But we very much need to, again, trade with that. Uh, I think we definitely want the Peach next turn. The sooner the better. Let's go ahead and put the Saint here. Again, it doesn't deal with that, but... Even if this uh, gets some trades out of the way, the sooner that we can get this cleared and feng shui it, the better off we will be. huh so this is only three minions in the boneyard here but this is I think relatively good for us we get to pop that and I think that now that we've drawn the other parry I think this goes back and we just take the heal for now I mean we do have this but I think we'd like to get a little more health out of it They're going to get back a racer. 
We're going to be taking a minimum of three here. Ooh. I had another Icker. Well, that might be it. That might be game, unfortunately. It's it's weird. <laughs> this Iron Flush Performer has put in so much work. We're going to have taken, what is that, like seven at a minimum? Like seven damage from these just because it has the armor and survives. Like it's almost kind of silly how good that's been. Fortune favors us. Boogeyman. Think of the two we would prefer to have Scion. So now it's just a question of do I just use this for the four health anyway? I mean, I don't think that the drawing drawing the card matters nearly as much as staying alive does for, you know, some pretty obvious reasons. Yeah, I think that I think we just have to use it. I think getting the health there is pretty important. I'm also trying to decide if I want to burn the Scion, actually. On the one hand, it seems really nice, but unless I top deck something, I can't play it in conjunction with anything. Whereas if I burn this this turn, then the following turn, I can also potentially play this and throw the uh, the life tap on it. So I actually think Scion goes away here. I'd prefer to, like, burn this or something, but... Um, in the grand, grand scheme of things here... I think getting this down and throwing a, a biting blade on it is my best chance to try to stabilize. It's not looking good though. Alright. Is this it? Let's see, we've got. We're down at six. We're down to technically three. Three, two with infuse. All right, a little bit less. All right, so uh, again, it is basically going to be our only shot here. The worst is that they're going to get back this oak as well. Alright, that is sadly game. So we're going to go to game two. It was a good game. I think our biggest issue there was that uh, desp despite running a fair number of like early game generating value things to help fight for the board, uh, we, we took too many turns off in the early game. We really would have benefited, I think, from something like uh, an early eager recruit or just things in that vein when you're when you're trying to clear the board and generate some two for one trades things like parry at the gates as amazing as that card is is not really what you want in the early game it's just not it's not how you stabilize it helps you win the long term attrition battle for sure but that that's not a game that's going to go to the long term attrition so while while we're waiting for that cue to pop like we can we can look, right? Like we had the ghoul, but we had to get rid of it. But having having double parry and then also drawing one back, I don't think did us any favors. None of our own racers for trades. I 
think seal was okay when we used it. That also set us back a little bit, though. Hmm. I suppose it's entirely possible that we're just too slow for that deck, period. I suppose it's possible. Alright, so we're going to go to game number two here. See if we can make things go a little bit better this time around. And I like where a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, leads in theory. Let's start by, I think, getting rid of this. These, uh, these boogeymen, again, are very cheeky. With a vixen, all right. But we don't obviously need to keep them in our openers. I swear I hit that button. Hey, we found our Jin Souk. Yeah, I think it's entirely possible that this deck is just going to be too slow for the more aggressive lists. But I did say at the start of this video that I was not super confident in our options. Now, that is not the way I thought that this was going to suddenly go. Like, that is a sharp left turn. So we're going to get poked there. We're just going to mend our way back, I guess, at the moment. And a thunderclap, huh? Okay. Another parry. Another parry. All right, so uh, in this instance, you know, we still have a million ways to draw cards. I think that, again, this parry is going to go back, and I would like to see this come down here. How Just do our best to fight with that over there. Going to try to protect it, assuming that it survives here. We're going into winter ourselves next turn, so there's a strong chance it just gets nuked between the two. But if it doesn't, you get some long-term value. I mean, even just getting this racer back is kind of nice. So if, even if it survives for a turn, we got a 2-5 deadly that let us draw a racer. So they got some damage on it. Burn the other fire eater. And they play a Cyclopean giant. Okay. The giant is interesting. Well, let's take the damage. A couple of different ways that we could, like, tackle this. Because we could just spirit this away. Which is what I'm leaning toward. Yeah, let's do, let's do that for now. I would have liked to have had something with, uh amend in that rotation as well just to start healing up our spirit friend but all right it's gone cataclysm huh interesting this is a much different deck than what i would have expected to be playing against cool is great 
Even though we eventually want to get to more orange gems, I think. For now. Doing something like this. It's a pretty good plan. You know, if they don't have an immediate answer, we could get to draw some cards. Because it's a utility action on Ghoul, if we ever really need to heal it or something, you can always sidestep and then activate it. The three health is pretty relevant because we're not on winter anymore, and that protects us from things like Magnus and Thunderclap. Things like uh, Jinsuk, Boogeyman, Seal, and Hand. All helping to potentially protect it. Alright, well, this will go. This will poke. I guess we're gonna seal that. I mean, we could just play the Boogeyman and help suppress it, but that doesn't feel great. I think I'd rather just not deal with giants any longer. Play a little bit of disruption. Uh, they can have the Thane back, I guess. Thane doesn't do a whole lot to threaten our board state at the moment, so we're fine with giving that up. Shopworn Bull is a good pickup for them. Alright, a couple of different ways that we could approach this. Get this damage in here now. So we could sidestep and then boogeyman this. Making them discard one of their two cards, but it's likely going to be the Thane. The other option is uh, we could play a combination of Jin Suk and the Racer in Shadow. Should help us get some damage on that. So we could Jin Suk that and then trade in for the, the two damage. Yeah, I think that that's what I like. So let's, let's burn that. So, make this a little less threatening so we can get some damage on it. Racer trades here. Gives us a little more leeway because Feng Shui might be able to blow up the speedway if this trade occurs and they don't replace it. Boogeyman, the, the less cards they have in hand, the, the more effective Boogeyman actually becomes, as weird as that sounds. Okay. One more turn and they could have hit me while I was in winter. But I respect the play. I mean, we gotta protect Jinsu. Now it's just a question of what do we want to do. I think just taking the damage is probably correct. We don't have a good way to get rid of that this turn. And they're only going to be drawing the one card. So I think doing something like this makes an awful lot of sense. Again, we're gonna we're gonna take some damage here.
All right. We can live with Fire Eater. It's annoying, sure, because we're going to take two damage on the Souk, but... Sword Saint is a great pickup for us, in my opinion. All right, so let's make sure we don't have to worry about haste anymore. Let's get the damage in. I think now actually is a pretty good time to challenge this and we might just end up discarding our pride. They only, they only have, uh, uh, like, the downside is is that, basically, they have no cards in hand, and they only have one card they're drawing per turn. I could wait till they get all the way to fall, and then they have two, but with all, all that mana, like, I'd be shocked if they ever hit a point where they're just going to have cards left. So at this point, this is strictly just a straight disadvantage for me at all times. I think we just get rid of the pride. I want to save the peach, I think, for potential health gain. When I eventually get rid of this, I think it... Here, we'll just attack for giggles. Um, I think that, again, holding on to Feng Shui for now to possibly get rid of that makes sense. Shutting down the bull from letting them kind of filter, increase their card quality, I think, makes sense as well. So they move just because they must have really disliked that card. Oh. Jin Suk. We tried. We tried, Suk. Alright, well, in this instance, uh, we've got a lot of actually really good options, but my favorite, I think, is burning this. Looking good! Because I really would like to gain a bunch of health. And then I think that uh, this coming down, nuking the speedway, makes sense. Because now, now we're at a reasonable health total. Uh, unless they answer all the way to the right, we're drawing two cards per turn. Unless they answer all the way to the left, we're gaining seven health. We have Armageddon Angel as backup. And we are one minion death away from Peach of Life officially cycling as well. We've, we've just hit that point in the game where our greed takes over. Whereas in the first game, you know, obviously against... Red, purple, Orpheum. If you if you do not have an early game against that deck, like you're just going to be punished. That's just the nature of the beast. So, uh, I did build this particular list a, a wee bit greedy, but at least it's paying off this time around. All right, interesting. They chose to move. So again, they, they have to do something here. Okay. Doing this, I think, for more filtering. Maybe they're just trying to find a suitable blocker for the left. I can't imagine a scenario where they want to take that seven to the face. No, they are just going to do that and then move like that. Okay. All right. This makes sense. Look at all that value. Alright, well, let's just go ahead and cycle this to see what we come up with. Spirit Away is a, a pretty solid pickup. It's not half bad. So sadly, this won't get to uh, to face, but again, helps us with the stabilize. But I do think that Spirit Away on Bragi makes sense, because then we we still get to push more damage, potentially protecting our pillar thing here. Um, in this case, I think cliffs go back just so that I can also mend, not just for my own health, but getting this a little bit higher, because we're gonna hit winter this next turn, 
So at four or more health, we're protected from Thunderclap. And uh, yeah, that's it. That seals it. So second game, a little bit better for us. And that's it. That's two games, win or lose. So if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. And hopefully you will consider subscribing and I'll catch you watching future videos.